Alright, welcome back to a new Touch Designer tutorial. And this is already number 40 of the main series and almost my hundred or my hundred of like all videos combined, which is sort of crazy because I don't really feel like I've been doing this for so long, but uh, apparently I have. And yeah, we're gonna work with texture instancing and we're gonna draw sort of with texture instancing. Um, so I, I really like this sort of hand-drawn look. And um, <clears throat> yeah, just a quick word, uh, word about that. The thing is only Windows users or only those users with an NVIDIA GPU can use texture instancing. That's kind of a pity and generally Touch Designer is sort of focused on NVIDIA GPUs. So sorry about that. So um, it only really, there is not really an alternative either. That said, um, let's get started. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you how you what you can do with this in the process um, so let's just dive into it so I'm going to start with a uh, noise as I do very often and we're gonna set the resolution here to 30 by 30 so that's the, the um, like the, the size of the grid that we're gonna build <coughs> from here I'm going to add a ramp and on this ramp, no, before I do that, actually, on the noise, let's also set this to 32-bit float. Let's change the period and the harmonics, 3 and 0. And um, let's actually animate this. ABS time dot seconds times 0.1. So this expression we use very often. And on the ramp, I uh, might want to just change the seed. And um, <coughs> on the ramp, I'm going to change the color mode to RGB. And let's just make this red. And let's add a math here. And do minus one and one. Because uh, then our grid is going to be centered. We can just copy and paste both of these. Ramp two, and let's just make this vertical and green instead of red. And uh, from here, I'm going to add a reorder and put the second math in there as well and um, I'm gonna input this noise in here and there's a lot of stuff we, we're gonna put here for the noise um, for the for this sort of input the way it looks um, but for now let's just select these so input one two three and let's just add a null here that is called inst for instancing and then let's add a rectangle so now we're doing the render setup and a transform and a geo and let's also add a camera and a constant material i really just need a constant here and i'm gonna change the color to like a dark gray because i'm gonna add like a bright background on the cam i'm gonna go to view and change the projection to alpha graphic and on the geo we can just turn instancing on already and then I'm going to add a render, a render, and change this to like a square, <coughs> and also change the pixel format to 32-bit float RGBA, because we're going to use, um, we both want to have the possibility to change the background, so we need like a, the alpha channel. And we also want to <coughs> displace the output. And when we use like displacement, it should always be at least 16 bit because uh, otherwise it's just not going to look good. Um, let's add a transform here and just set this to like 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9 and one for the alpha. And then we have like a light gray background. Let's add another null and call it BG and automatically here. Now we see the background. Okay, cool. So let's go to the geo and select um, our inst as a default instance op and select r and g um, as the values for <coughs> for the x and y positioning. Let's go ahead and change the uniform scale to 0 0.06. So now we can nicely see we have a perfect grid of 30 by 30 um, rectangles. Right. Cool, so uh, let's go ahead and actually work on the texture instancing. So I'm gonna add a base, sort of like a folder, and I'm gonna call this textures. 
and with C I'm going to add a like a color to this so we know um, it's important so in the texture folder um, or base <coughs> I'm going to add a rectangle top and let's just change the resolution to like 100 by 100 because we don't really need a high resolution for the small rectangles because you know they're just going to be put onto here and from the rectangle I'm going to add a null and call it text 0 so it's important that you call it like you know this name is going to be important <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say here and I'm going to change the size to 1 by 1 and then I'm going to add a uh, transform from here and just make the scale like, smaller copy this text and put that in here <coughs> and now I'm just going to copy this and pass it once and pass it again like I'm just changing the rotation here here I'm gonna add the like change the scale again back to 1 and just push it over by point minus point 0.5 copy this and let's just get rid of this uh, minus so now we have already like uh, five different textures called all called the same but with different numbers starting from 0 and ending at 4 alright so how do we put um, <coughs> different textures based on these values onto these um, rectangles? Or like, how do we how do we put all of these uh, different te textures onto these rectangles in a cool way? So we have this noise coming in here, uh, which is giving us a value between zero and one. We can uh, see that by clicking on display pixel values, and then you can just see like you know it's all in the range of zero and one. <clears throat> or you can also just look here amplitude and offset is 0.5 that means it's between 0 and 1 so before we actually do some some cooler in, uh, small feedback stuff here uh, let's just add a MAV and uh, an OP find that so for the MAV <clears throat> I want to change the range to the amount of textures we have and um, not really the amount, but actually the amount minus one because we're like uh, starting at zero, so texture zero, then we already have that, and we're ending at four here, so we also want to end at four here. So uh, let's just make that dynamic and look for the um, look for the textures, look how many texture like text nulls we have. So let's look in the textures base, and by just typing it in here. So now we're looking in there and looking for all the operators that are inside there. So now we can go to filter filters and just type in text asterisk and now we can just see all the text operators and that's really all we need to do here now we can just type in um, on the math to range two we can type in op op find one dot num rows but that's gonna display six because if we middle mouse click, we can see it has six rows, like the header, so the name type, and that's of all these columns that you can turn on. And um, we can also just turn off the type, we don't really need that. <coughs> so we just have, uh, so we have five different operators and uh, one header, um, but we, as we just saw, we, we need to go to four, actually. So let's just subtract two, uh, two. Not for getting confused now all right so now these values if we display the pixel values here they're going between zero and um, four so <coughs> uh, and whatever like how ma however many textures we put in here now it's always going to be the correct um, range here so now let's go to the geo let's go to the instance 2 page and let us use the inst uh, null here as well on the like on the texture index op and let's use the texture index b because that like that's the blue channel and that's what we're putting uh, in here uh, so the third input here is the blue channel as we have uh, specified here so our blue is blue channel is um, the index that we're using and now all we need to do is define what textures to look for so we have our text nulls in here <coughs> and the textures component uh, like base so let's say textures 
text and an asterisk. And there we go. Now it actually is working nicely. So, yeah, <laughs> that that is the basic idea here. So um, let's do two main things here. Uh, first off, let's create more textures. So we have uh, more textures, uh, more more fun, I guess. <laughs> so let's copy the direct the rectangle, and um, let's change the size to point one. So it's just a line. And now there's a little trick to like duplicate this with the layout because I, I just want to have like three or four lines. So on the layout, we can change the fit to native resolution. And then we can just input the same thing multiple times. So we have like three or four uh, lines next to each other. So that's a neat trick. You can do as many as you want. Um, and yeah, there's still like the same resolution defined like by the, in the input actually. Okay, so now I can just um, copy and paste this. Nope, not this. <laughs> this one, the text five. And now I can just add a transform here. And again, copy this. And on this transform, I'm just gonna change the rotation to 90. And I'm gonna copy these two more times. I'm gonna no, actually just one time. And uh, change this to 45 and as you can see, it, it like cuts off these parts, so you can just change the scale, Y. And uh, here we can just add a minus. <clears throat> so now we have four more textures. And now what we can do is we can just copy the whole thing. And let's just get rid of the layout. So now we have, uh, as you can see, this automatically updates. It's like we have now, we now have the new textures uh, being taken into account there. So now we have uh, very easily made 13 textures. And uh, as you can see, this goes to 12. So in, in total, we have 13 textures <coughs> because it starts at zero. <laughs> OK, so um, right, let's add a little feedback magic here. A very easy displacement, the classic display slope thing. Well, that really looks nice here. So let's add a feedback and a compo composite and a uh, blur which I'm just gonna bypass for now and I'm also gonna add that the displays here and we also want to have a slope starting from our noise actually let's just do it this way so we just have one thing it's a bit cleaner and right so let's input the slope here on the displays let's now uh, change this to like 0.1 like the displays weight and let's drag the f drag that back onto the feedback let's add a keyboard in so we can reset the feedback as usual put that on the pulse and now we can like reset that and now let's um, let's add this into the composite and change the composite to uh, pin light and let's add a we can actually leave it that way you can already see this looks a bit more interesting than just noise it doesn't just look like noise that's always kind of important to me <laughs> now because i've just seen it so many times and uh, yeah we can just like change the strength and sample step here and uh, maybe add some blur a bit less Yeah, so um, I mean, it looks a bit weird sometimes. I think that's fine. <laughs> like, um, yeah, you can change the the noise here, of course. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Just just play around with with this stuff. So um, this isn't like any set thing. Always with feedback loop, it's a lot of just trial and error. All I wanted to do here is, you know, just get rid of the usual. I mean, it still looks cool with just noise, but you can, once you've worked with it a bit, you can very easily see it's just noise. And um, yeah, so in this way you can you can make it just look a bit more interesting. So feel free to just play around play around with the feedback here. 
Okay, and another thing that I wanted to do. So first off, we can like change off. We can change the um, uniform scale here. So if we make it like kind of higher, that's that's a very different feel. And making it smaller, I especially like that. And now let's go ahead and add a displace here. And from the render, let's add a noise. Put that in here. And on the displace, let's go down to like 0.1. And uh, on the noise, let's turn off monochrome because it always looks much better when you're like displacing to turn off the monochrome, as you can see. Otherwise, you have these kind of sort of lines. And I see that very often and it's it doesn't look that good. And this way, it just looks so much better. So um, <clears throat> uh, let's change the period maybe to like 2. And now we can like go down with the amplitude here. And we can go up with the harmonics. And uh, one thing that's important, because you can see it looks very strange now, we can go to the output and just uh, change that to noise. And that way it looks much better. Because otherwise we're like displacing the lines by themselves as well. So this is a very subtle difference, but I think the subtle differences really make the difference, you know? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, a lot about like generative art is like the subtle subtlety as well. So I really like that. And um, <clears throat> of course, you can feel free to like, uh, please use other textures as well. This, these are just examples. You can also use circles and, and you know, whatever. And uh, you can, I don't know, for example, change the camera <laughs> just to give it a bit of a border, 2.2 maybe. And um, yeah, as I said, just feel free to like play around with the uh, feedback loop here and of course other inputs you can also use like a, your camera for example uh, to like like as an index channel here all right so that is really it thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um yeah i'm i'm working on on a lot of new stuff and also if you want to dive deeper into instancing uh in the end at the end of this week i will start like an instancing course i will leave a link below and if you want to support me you can support me on patreon and thank you so much to everybody who is already supporting me really means a lot to me all right see you in the next video